Good morning, and welcome to St. Augustine's Parish as we celebrate the Nativity of the Lord. Our celebrant this morning is Father Figueroa. Our Mass is being offered for all our parishioners and benefactors, and for Dennis Mann Wearing and for Italia Santucci. Please rise and welcome Father Figueroa and join in the processional hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful, number 99, number 99. Proclamation of the birth of Christ from the Christmas martyrology. Today, the eve, or today, the 25th day of December, unknown ages from the time when God created the heavens and the earth and then formed man and woman in his own image. Several thousand years after the flood, when God made the rainbow shine forth as a sign of the covenant. 21 centuries from the time of Abraham and Sarah. 13 centuries after Moses led the people of Israel out of Egypt, 1,100 years from the time of Ruth and the judges, 1,000 years from the anointing of David as king in the 65th week according to the prophecy of Daniel, in the 194th Olympiad, the 752nd year from the foundation of the city of Rome, the 42nd year of the reign of Octavian Augustus, the whole world being at peace, Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the eternal Father, desiring to sanctify the world by his most merciful coming, being conceived by the Holy Spirit, and nine months having passed since his conception, was born in Bethlehem of Judea of the Virgin Mary. Today is the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the flesh.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Look Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderfully restored it, grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings glad tidings, announcing peace, bearing good news, announcing salvation, and saying to Zion, your God is king. Hark, your sentinels raise a cry. Together they shout for joy for they see directly before their eyes the Lord restoring Zion. Break out together in song, O ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord comforts his people, he redeems Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations. All the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in times past, God spoke in partial and various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through the Son, whom he made heir of all things, and through whom he created the universe, who is the refugence of his glory, the very imprint of his being, and who sustains all things by his mighty word. When he had accomplished purification from sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high, as far superior to the angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which the angels did God ever say, you are my son, this day I have begotten you, or again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through Him, and without Him nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him. But the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we saw his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, saying, This is he of whom I said, The one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace because while the law was given through Moses, Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only Son, God, who is at the Father's side has revealed Him. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord. 
Firstly, on behalf of Father McSweeney, Father Matthew, myself, and all the deacons of St. Augustine, we want to wish all of you and your families a very merry, holy, happy, healthy Christmas. This has been a very kind of uh, busy weekend, or long weekend, if you will, for many of us. Of course, we had all our Masses on Sunday and today. Now, perhaps if you were here during the day on Sunday, at one of the Masses, when it was still Advent, you would have heard the opening hymn, O Come Divine Messiah, at the beginning of Mass. The words go like this. O come, divine Messiah, the world in silence awaits the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. Dear Savior, haste, come, come to earth, dispel the night and show your face and bid us hail the dawn of grace. O come, divine Messiah. God had never been seen before in human history. Today, the Messiah comes to us to reveal the face of God and bring us salvation. Today, the words of this song are brought to reality. You know, Christmas is such a beautiful time. Families come together. We get to see those who perhaps it's been too long since we've seen from before. Of course, there's also the wonder of gift giving. Gifts are a beautiful way to celebrate, but we know that Christmas gifts are, is only the surface of Christmas. There is something much deeper to Christmas. Why do we say Merry Christmas? That word Merry, it means to be cheerful or joyful, to be happy, to be in good spirits. We say Merry Christmas because our Savior has been born for us. The Savior who had been promised throughout the Old Testament, He has finally come. God Himself is with us, Emmanuel. This is all cause to rejoice, to be merry. We are merry because Christ is with us. Gifts certainly make us happy. They are a beautiful expression of love for one another. But it's important that we remember that Christ is the reason for Christmas. He is the reason for the gifts. It is also important for us to remember that Christ was born in a manger. He was born in the most poor conditions. There was no room for him in the inn, no warmth. Rather, he was born in a manger in Bethlehem in the piercing cold at midnight. He was born among wild animals in the darkness of the night. But our newborn king is indeed the light of the world. And with his birth, heavenly light shines upon all of us. This is one reason why our Christmas trees are decorated with so many beautiful lights. Those lights symbolize Christ, who is the light of the world. This is a good reason why, then, we should keep our Christmas trees up and lit, because Christmas is not just a day. Christmas is a season. And we celebrate this season at least until the baptism of the Lord, which occurs this year on January 8th. So let's keep the Christmas spirit and keep those trees shining brightly. The infant king is worthy of it. Let us remember that angels came to adore him, shepherds came to adore him, kings came to adore him, and you and me, today and always, we come to adore him. We adore him especially by following him, following the teachings of the Holy Gospel, by respecting and honoring our neighbor, and by being merry when we come to Mass each and every week. We adore him by taking some time each day to speak to him. This is what prayer is. Prayer is simply speaking to Jesus, telling him all the things that we would tell someone that we love. In prayer, we raise our hearts and souls to God. 
St. Teresa of Avila would call the inner part of our soul where we speak to God, to God, she would call that part of our soul our little heaven. This Christmas, let us whisper to the babe in the manger, to the newborn king, to the savior of the world, opening our hearts to him each and every day and speaking to him. This allows Jesus to speak to us. This line of communication between us and Jesus, between Jesus and us, is the greatest gift that we can receive, and it is the greatest gift that we can give to Christ. The gift is the gift of ourselves. To give him loving hearts, hearts eager to know him, to love him, to serve him. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us be simple shepherds this Christmas, keeping watch by praying each and every day, by following God's grace to his new manger right here in the church, the place where our Lord rests and waits for us, right here in the tabernacle. We come here like those shepherds to love and adore him. We come to Jesus with all our soul, giving him our little heaven so that he can give us a taste of heaven. And that taste of heaven is the gift of himself, the gift of himself truly and really present in the most holy Eucharist, the Word made flesh. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. For the church, that she may be tireless in proclaiming the newborn king to the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For all nations throughout the world, that the peace and tranquility of Christ may transform every heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For our parish community, that the joy and peace of Christmas may fill our homes, we pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the diaconate, especially from our own parish, we pray to the Lord. For the sick of our parish, especially Vincent Giuliano, Peace Aiden, Barbara O'Donnell, Gloria Rodriguez, Marie Tassini, Grace Aaronholtz, Jerry Pesch, Gertrude Pickney, Ellen Mitchell, Manuel Aristi, Terry Beresford, Angela Separano, and Maria Reynolds, that they may receive God's comfort and healing, we pray to the Lord. 
for all who have died, especially Mary Morrissey, and for Dennis Manwaring, Manwaring and Italia Santucci, for whom this Holy Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray for stronger marriages and families, for those in single life, for a greater respect for all human life, for all the intentions in our parish book of petitions, and all those intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. And for all these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Most Holy Father, we thank you for sending us your Son. In your infinite love and wisdom, we ask you to grant our prayers according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in our offertory hymn, The First Noel, number 112, number 112. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true celebrating the most sacred day on which blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damon and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you into their company, now weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, 
peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen. Amen. Please join in our communion hymn, Silent Night, number 81, number 81.
future years shall see evermore and evermore. Blessed was the day forever when the virgin full of grace by the Holy Ghost conceiving for the Savior of our race and the child the world's redeemer first revealed his sacred face evermore and evermore O ye heights of heaven adore him angel hosts his praises sing all dominions bow before him and extol our God and King let no tongue on earth be silent every voice in concert ring evermore and evermore Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world, born this day, is the author of divine generation for us, so he may be the giver even of immortality, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. St. Michael, Michael, the, the Archangel, Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And please join in our recessional <laughs> hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, number 102, number 102. <laughs>